Programmatic advertising is the most advanced ad technology or mode of online advertising. It is complex, technical and needs some level of knowledge to understand. With all this, it's still the most pursued career in digital marketing because of the less saturation being a high demand skill and it also pays well. In the next 13 minutes, I'm going to explain to you the most important 50 concepts you need to know about programmatic advertising. If you're wondering how programmatic advertising started or came into being, imagine this. A website like New York Post few decades ago, they were expecting 1 million users to visit their website in the coming month and thus have 1 million ad spaces available which they could sell. Now all their advertising partners like Nike and other companies, let's say they bought half a million of these ad spaces for the next month. But what happens to the other half million opportunities to sell ads? For New York Post, those ad spaces are wasted. To tackle this problem, companies like DoubleClick, Google and Yahoo then was a big shot in this kind of space, created programs to sell these ad spaces called Remnant Inventory. The buying and selling of these ad spaces on websites and apps using programs was called programmatic advertising because it was all being taken care of specialized programs. Now the basic building block of programmatic advertising is an ad space which is a placeholder of an ad. It appears on a website or an app or it can appear on other digital properties. Now these ad spaces are called ad slots and sometimes referred to as ad inventory because this is what a website and app owners sell. Well, when you look at programmatic advertising as a whole, overall there are three parties involved in all the process. The first one is the company that owns the website and app and sell ad spaces. These are called publishers. Now publishers have an audience who visits their websites and apps to get information, news, entertainment, etc. For example, bbc.com, Candy Crush, New York Times, gold.com and all these websites who have content which people basically go there to consume this content or entertainment or play games or whatever. On the other hand, we have companies who want to show ads to these visitors of the websites and apps. Those companies are called advertisers. Companies like Samsung, Nike and a doctor's clinic showing ads on a website is a good example of advertisers as well. So in order to understand the role of the third party involved, let's imagine this. Before programmatic advertising, whenever an advertiser was interested to show ads on a publisher's website, they basically would sign a contract which mentioned costs, quantity of ads and other details and this contract was called an insertion order. So basically, if Nike wanted to show ads on BBC.com, somebody from Nike would get in touch with the sales team of BBC.com and they will discuss all what they wanted, how much money they want to spend, the quantity of ads they want to buy and they will physically sign a contract which is called an insertion order. But after the introduction of programmatic advertising, this whole process is done through programs and online softwares and these companies are like Google, the Trade Desk and a lot of other companies. So now we understand that in a programmatic advertising ecosystem, there are generally at least three parties involved, a publisher, an advertiser and an ad tech company who provide these platforms. Ad tech companies handle payments and enable these deals between advertisers and publishers and there needs to be no prior connection or relationship between the advertiser and publisher and advertiser based in India can literally book ad inventory on a website based in the US or Africa. To give you an idea of scale, using programmatic advertising nowadays, every second millions of advertisers buy inventory on millions of advertiser properties and this all happens in sophisticated backend softwares called ad exchanges. One of the example of ad exchanges is Google ad exchange. This is probably one of the biggest. So for any advertiser or publisher to participate in programmatic mode of online advertising, they need to be connected to these ad exchanges. So just like we use brokerage trading softwares like eToro, Robinhood, etc. to participate in stock exchange to buy and sell stocks. Similarly, an advertiser has to use a software called a DSP or a demand side platform to buy inventory in an ad exchange. We call it demand side because advertisers generate a demand for inventory. Some examples of demand side platforms is Davy360, the Trade Desk and a lot others. On the other hand, for publishers to be able to plug their inventory to the ad exchanges to sell their inventory, they use specialized softwares called SSPs or supply side platforms. 
you guessed it right because publishers have a supply of ad inventory in the ad exchange one thing here to remember is that not all publishers can sell their inventory through the ad exchanges there is a certain criteria set by each ad exchange to be able to sell via the ad exchange the number of users who visit the website or the app is one of the big factors and this number is called traffic of the website or the app. So to give you an example, a DSP might say that, okay, if you are a publisher and have at least 10,000 visitors or traffic every day, then only you can connect your website to ad exchange and sell your inventory. Anyone who has less traffic will not be able to do so. The smaller publishers who don't meet this traffic criteria partner with bigger companies called ad networks who represent the inventory of the all these small publishers together and sell the ad slots through ad exchanges for a commission because for an ad exchange they are one company and they represent these small companies now these companies are called ad networks some examples of ad networks are gdn or google display network or facebook partner network the buying and selling of ad inventory through ad exchanges between the publishers and advertisers can happen in three different modes the first one is programmatic guaranteed. In this type of deal, the advertiser demands a guaranteed number of exposure in terms of how many times the ad will be displayed called impression. In case of video, it can be video views. When the publisher commits to this quantity, so they have a programmatic guaranteed deal. An example of this would be Samsung goes to bbc.com and says we have a new phone launch campaign. And for the seven days from this date to this date, we want to have one million impressions on your website. So if BBC says, OK, we will book it for you. This means that this is a programmatic guarantee deal. But in certain cases, the advertiser does not want to commit to a number of impressions or views and they agree to buy and sell whenever the advertiser wants and publisher keeps his ad slots available to the advertiser to bid and show ads. Now, this type of deal is called a PMP or a private marketplace. Generally, the advertiser makes these ad slots available to many other advertisers as well and anticipates that at any given point of time, one of these advertisers bids and buys these slots. Now, to give you an idea, all publishers want to sell most of their inventory through programmatic guaranteed deals because it kind of gives them an idea that how much of the inventory is already sold and the prices for programmatic guaranteed deals are higher. But if they are not able to sell it through programmatic guarantee, what the publishers do is the leftover inventory, whatever is left after programmatic guarantee deals, they send this inventory packages to multiple advertisers and ask them that if you want to buy at any given point of time, this inventory is available for you five advertisers 10 advertisers or 20 advertisers only thing mentioned in this type of deal is the minimum price each of these advertisers will have to pay if they want to buy any ad slots and this is called a floor price for every ad slot sold through pmps a request is sent to the advertisers wherever there is a visitor on the website or app and most of the advertisers who are taking part in this pmp will send their bid price which has to be at least equal to the floor price or above it and this bid price determines that how much each advertiser is willing to pay for that ad slot. After each of the advertisers sends their bid price, the process of selecting the highest bidder is called an ad auction. All of this happens during a visitor visits the website and until he sees an ad in real time. And that's why this process generally is referred to as real time bidding. Now, if the publisher still has some ad slots left after selling through programmatic guarantee deals and PMPs, this inventory is generally considered to be low quality and as mentioned it's called the remnant inventory to sell this inventory they resort to the third type of ad selling called open auction it's called open auction because the publisher leaves it open and any advertiser using a dsp can buy this and there is no floor price set generally one thing to keep in mind is that the ad doesn't just have to be a banner or video appearing on the website or app within recent years programmatic advertising is expanding its reach to different type of media nowadays using dsps we can buy audio campaigns which means audio ads running on podcasts and apps like shopify using dsps we can also show ads on connected tvs like 
स्मार्ट टीवी स्ट्रीमिंग एप्स लाइक बीबीसी और रोकू टीवी एक्सेट्रा ऑल्सो वन ऑफ द रिसेंट एडिशन इज द डिजिटल आउट ऑफ होम बैनर्स विच आर डिजिटल बैनर्स विच यू कैन सी इन मॉल स्ट्रीट्स एंड यू कैन बाय दीज स्लॉट्स यू कैन बाय एड्स ऑन दीज डिजिटल बैनर्स यूजिंग प्रोग्रामेटिक एडवर्टाइजिंग एज वेल एंड दिस इज कॉल्ड प्रोग्रामेटिक डी ओ ओ एच डी ओ ओ एच स्टैंडिंग फॉर डिजिटल आउट ऑफ होम Going back to the deals between advertisers and publishers there are quite important quantities which an advertiser wants to report on to understand the quantity and effectiveness of the publisher and their inventory these quantities are called metrics kpis which is key performance indicators or deliverables now the billing and rates for buying and selling this inventory is also done in one of these metrics the most common billing metrics are impressions and the rates are determined for every 1000 impression because the cost of one impression will be very less and complicate accounting and this price for 1000 impressions is called cpm or cost per mil a cpm of 6 dollars would mean that the publisher charges 6 dollars for every 1000 impressions sometimes the rates can be in cpc which means publisher charges for every clicks regardless of how many times the ad was shown like a 2 dollar cpc would mean that the publisher will charge 2 dollars for every click it the advertiser's ads received or it can be a cpd which means cost per day or it can be cpi which means cost per install or it can be cpa which means cost per acquisition well the billing model completely depends on what is important for an advertiser for example in some cases advertisers want to reach as many as people as possible to let them know about an offer or a launch by the way using programmatic advertising we can know even how many unique people saw an ad on a publisher's website and this metric is called unique reach advertisers also use engagement metrics to understand how effective a particular publisher or inventory is for them engagement metrics tell us how many people found our ads interesting and engaged with them for display ads it's measured by ctr or click through rate which is the percentage of people who clicked on the ad after seeing it similarly for video ads it's measured using vtr or view through rate which is the percentage of people who watched the video after it was initially shown to them higher the ctr or vtr better it's considered by an advertiser now after this evolution and by understanding this publishers became smarter with time and developed ad formats which generate high engagement rates because they knew that it is important for the advertisers one of the most engaging format of on mobile is considered to be interstitial format which covers the whole screen generally appears between stages of a game or opening of an app the other high impact ad format is called rich media by definition rich media ad is an ad which the user can interact with for an example you might have seen some ads where you hover your mouse over the ad and it expands it becomes bigger in certain cases you see an animation in an ad you can pause the animation etc one more format generally with a good engagement rate is native ads format by definition a native ad is developed in a way so that it appears like website native content and not flashy like an ad so in principle publishers and advertisers have been working on formats and techniques to increase these engagement rates one of the most important things that needs to be considered while analyzing engagement rate is how impressions are counted in programmatic advertising if we have a lengthy web page and an ad appears at the bottom of the page and let's suppose the user never scroll down an impression for that particular ad will still be counted and if it is a cpm based deal the advertiser will still have to pay for this for this reason advertisers always prefer to buy inventory towards the top of the page this part of the website which appears in the beginning without scrolling is called atf or above the fold and the part that appears below which needs to be scrolled for is called btf or below the fold now with the advanced technology we are able to see that how many times the ad was actually displayed to a user regardless if it was above the fold or below the fold and this piece of technology is called viewability and the number of times an ad was actually seen by a user is called viewable impressions that is the 45 concepts for this video and the rest of them we will discuss in the next video but meanwhile if you want to know more about programmatic advertising don't forget to watch my video introduction to programmatic advertising in 18 minutes or do any of the courses on dsps or any of the ssps